Hi friends, it's William K back for another video. So today we are going to take a closer look at the Ample Sound sample library and how we can make a song with it. So if you go to Riffarm and you click on the Load Riff button right there, uh, you get tons of samples, uh, royalty free and easy to use. So my favorite to be played on an acoustic guitar VST like Ampo Guitar Taylor uh, can be found in the Kane folder and it's called Folk 01 Electric Strum 02. So uh, just click on it, it's going to appear in the riffer interface and I'm going to press play and you can hear the song I've made with this sample. So just check it out. Okay, so uh, before we start, just make sure you have selected the Strom library, okay, uh, or an equivalent in the Ampersand Guitar Collection. Then you go to the Effects section, you make sure you have selected the Room uh, Reverb preset and not the Big Hole, okay, that like, will sound better. Uh, then you go to Settings, you go to Sample, and you decrease the start knob uh, down to 0 milliseconds. Okay, that is better for programming. And if you do that, uh, you close the plugin and uh, you make sure the uh, track delay is set at minus 50 milliseconds. Alright, then we come back to the Riffer interface. And if you have the sample loaded in it, we can start analyzing it. So uh, they gave us a nice chord progression uh, that consists of uh, three main chords, a C sharp uh, minor, an A major, and a B major. So that chord progression is great and it's uh, sufficient and efficient for a nice introduction or a verse. So uh, without uh, doing any modification, we are going to drag the MIDI information into our track, which is there. So you click on uh, the little cross there, you click, you hold, and you drag it into the MIDI track, okay? And that is already the introduction. So without doing anything, we already have a nice introduction. Okay, so the introduction is already made. Now we need to have a, or to compose a chorus. Okay, so the problem we have with this sample uh, for composing a chorus is that the opening chord, which is in that case a B major, is used as a transition to come back to the C sharp major, minor, sorry. So uh, what we need is to use that chord, the B major, to open a new measure. Uh, so we'll just extend the number of measures uh, the riff contains, so from one to two, all right? So there we have the empty measure. We click anywhere on the, the first measure, uh, right click, you go to copy measure to number two, you overwrite what we had, and instead of having a C sharp minor right there, you click on it, uh, you go to uh, the root uh, chord information right there. You select B. We want a major chord and we want it to be played on the second position. All right, and then you repeat 
that exercise for any C sharp major you have in the second measure. All right, great. So uh, if we start the second measure with a B major, we need not to end the first measure with a B major as well, or it will sound just super weird. So uh, what we can do is select the two uh, B major chords at the end of the first measure and turn them into an A major, second position as well. All right, so click on that A major, second position, and we need to have uh, something quite hom homogeneous at the end of the measure. So uh, we'll click on the A3 note, delay it, click, right click on the E3 note, delay it, same thing there. And then we have a perfect uh, first measure and perfect start of second measure. Then to close the riff, we'll need like a, another chord. We don't want an A major, okay? We want a G sharp major played in first position. So we need to transform all of these uh, A, or A major chords into a G sharp major. All right, so there again, G sharp major, first position. And after that, we'll just have the entire riff already made and we have nothing else to do. So that is just super great. And the last one, just like this. So um, that is the chorus we need. So, okay, maybe we need to duplicate uh, the, the introduction so it lasts four measures. And then we just drag what we, what we just did into the MIDI track. And we'll have the uh, introduction there. We can rename it introduction. And the chorus, chorus, just there. And we already have uh, half of the song made in just like, what, three, four minutes? So that is just super great. Okay, so now we have um, we have an introduction, we have a chorus, and what we want is a verse, okay, uh, on which we can write a little melody. So uh, to create the verse, it's going to be even more simple. We just uh, click on introduction, okay, the MIDI information, we copy, we paste it, uh, right after the chorus and if you go to the MIDI information okay uh, you basically have everything you programmed in Riffon or what they programmed in Riffon uh, but if you look at it you we have uh, the CO triggers several times in the MIDI information that CO is triggering the palmute mode, which is great for an introduction, great for a chorus, but maybe too loud for a verse, okay? We want something super sweet. So instead of having those CO, we'll just have some DO, okay? So you just select them all, okay? Like this, or like in um, Ableton, you can just click on the CO uh, note in the piano roll, and then you drag it one and two times up and we have a DO. And this DO note, okay, will trigger the palmute mode. So we actually do nothing, nothing else, okay? We just change the MIDI information from CO to DO. And then we'll have uh, the, the song in palmute mode. So just check it out. Okay, finally, maybe I'm going to um, change the MIDI information there. Instead of having a DO at position uh, 1.4.2, maybe I'm going to change it to a CO, all right? And so it will add a bit more personality to and realism to uh, the riff we are playing. Just check it out.
Yep, that is definitely better. So uh, let's do it. Uh, same thing for like in the third measure. Okay, we want a CO there. So uh, just come back to the MIDI track and duplicate it. Okay, in Ableton it's made with a control or command D. And it seems that we have a, the entire song. Maybe we need an ending. Uh, so for an ending, you just click on the chorus, on the introduction, you copy, you go just after the introduction. Oh, sorry, that is not introduction, that is verse. So I'm going to rename it, okay, verse, and there as well, we want a verse. Okay, and right after the verse, then, uh, you just copy what we, you, you just paste what you copied, and you go to the MIDI information and what we can do for an ending is to select everything in the MIDI information, click on delayed. We want to delay that as well. And we're gonna, we are going to extend the notes as much as we can. So it's gonna just uh, keep on uh, ringing without being uh, interrupted. And that would be the ending. So we rename it ending. And that's it. We have a song. Okay, so that is obviously like a very short song. But if you just repeat the chorus after the verse and you come back to the verse and extra, etc., you'd have a like a three or four minute uh, song. So that is how you can compose a song with a sample in the in the Amplesound library, uh, super fast, like in some minutes. Okay, then you add uh, like a melody, a piano if you want, some drums and stuff, and that's it. That's how you compose a song uh, with Amplesound. So thank you for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it um, helped you to uh, master uh, these wonderful VSTs uh, provided by Amplesound. Uh, just like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment in the section below if you have any difficulties or any questions regarding Ampl Amplesound VSTs. And see you next time.